Today we're talking about the loudest aircraft of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, the XF-84H Thunder Screech. Real quick, before we get too far into this, this video is brought to you by my favorite sporting goods store, Shields. They have a bunch of amazing retail locations all across the U.S., but if you don't live near any of those, they have an even better online store that I'm going to have linked down below, where they have literally anything that has anything to do with going outside, hunting gear, fishing gear, camping gear, they have it all, and I would highly recommend you go check out their site. Again, that is linked down below. Let's get back to the video. Now, this is probably one of the most hated aircrafts of all time, both by the pilots and the people that worked on it. It was unaffectionately given the nickname of, and I quote, the mighty ear banger, which is just, it's, it, we need to move on. All right, here's the deal. Once upon a time in the 1950s, the United States Navy decided that they wanted a new type of carrier fighter that would be able to take off from an aircraft carrier without using the catapult. You know, that thing that yeets the planes off the flight deck. Apparently reloading the catapult was taking too long and the Navy wanted to be able to get more planes in the air quicker to deliver on healthcare faster. Not a terrible goal, the only problem was jet technology at this point in time simply would not allow a jet to do this, which meant that this new fighter was going to have to be a prop driven plane like the Sky Raider. But the only problem with that was is that the Navy demanded that this new fighter had the same ability as a jet. Okay, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down, I'm trying to tell you that the Navy is about to try to make a supersonic prop driven plane. I'm going to say that again, but slower. The United States Navy is is gonna try to get a plane with a propeller to try to break the sound barrier. Okay, that's like a fucking Amish guy in a boogie breaking a land speed record. They're not supposed to do that. But they're gonna try it anyways because America. So they take an F-84 Thunderstreak, they rip the jet engine out of the middle and then cram an enormous Allison T-40 engine inside of it and slap a propeller on the front. Okay, here's the deal with this engine. It is 5,850 horsepower and it doesn't have a throttle. It just runs at 100% nonstop all the time. So the only way they were actually able to control the speed of the airplane was to change the pitch of the blades on the propeller, which you can kind of see here. There's those circles that changes the angle, makes the plane go faster or slower without having to change the speed of the engine. The only problem with that was is when the blades were put to max pitch to move the most air to go the fastest, it generated so much torque that while the propeller was going one way, the engine wanted to spin the entire plane the other way, basically forcing the plane to do a non-stop barrel roll. Do a barrel roll! Do a barrel roll! Do a barrel roll! Do a barrel roll! Do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. And here's the thing, that wasn't even really the problem. The problem was the noise. Okay, bear with me while I try to explain this, I'm not a science teacher, but when you look at a propeller and you see the blades, the tips of the blades are traveling faster than the base of the blades because as it rotates, it has to cover a greater amount of distance in the same amount of time. Does that make sense to everybody? Good, great, okay. Here's what was happening. That engine is turning this propeller at over 900 miles an hour, and because the tips are traveling faster than the base of the blades, the last 12 inches of the tip of each blade, so yet three blades, three tips, are all breaking the sound barrier, but the bases of those blades were not breaking the sound barrier. So each blade would create a sonic boom, back out, and then create another sonic boom almost immediately, and this was generating over 900 sonic booms per second which basically sounded like one constant sonic boom to everybody involved. To give you an idea of how loud this was, it's believed that this created over 200 decibels of noise. The only thing known to mankind louder than that is the detonation of a major nuclear warhead or a volcano. Okay, this thing was so loud that the shock waves sent one of the engineers into a seizure. It knocked one of the mechanics unconscious and gave everyone anywhere near it nausea, headaches, and vomiting. It was so loud that people in the next town over 45 miles away were complaining at how loud this thing was. And here's the part where I'm gonna upset you. I don't have any audio of it up close because it would literally destroy any microphone that got near it. The best I can give you is this, which is a recording of it from the ground as this thing is flying overhead at like 30,000 feet. <laughs> This plane is so fucking loud, it's almost stealthy. I mean, are you gonna hear it coming from 50 miles away? Sure, for a second, then you're never gonna fucking hear anything ever again. I mean, you can't hear the Americans coming if you can't hear, that's just science. So clearly this aircraft is extremely dangerous to anybody that's even remotely near it, especially the pilot who's literally sitting behind 900 sonic booms per second that are trying to make him vomit, lose consciousness, and shit his pants all at the same time. And if that wasn't enough, when he finally does get that plane into the air, it's gonna try to torque him into a barrel roll the entire time. So obviously, 
We're only going to test fly it like 12 times because, you know, safety third. Get ready. So they find two test pilots to fly this monstrosity. The first test pilot takes it up in the air, brings it back down, lands it. It's a successful test flight, I guess. He gets out of the cockpit, walks up to the engineer of the entire project, and says, and I quote, you're not big enough and there's not enough of you to get me back in that plane. Okay, and that's coming from a test pilot. That dude's already fucking nuts. Bear in mind, the US Air Force approached him and was like, hey, would you like to drive a propeller-driven plane past the sound barrier and he said yes and now you have this guy backing out so clearly this plane is fucking ridiculous cue this man hank beard he is the second test pilot that did the other 11 test flights and of the 11 test flights he had to crash land at 10 fucking times this dude is literally just given the grim reaper blue balls as an occupation okay we don't know this for sure but legend has it the only thing that kept that plane from barrel rolling non-stop was the sheer weight of this man's nutsack and when he was asked what he thought about the subject after the test flights he replied with and i quote what so after 12 test flights they decided to cancel the entire project not because it's too dangerous not because it required 10 crash landings but because the perpetual sonic booms are literally rattling the airplane apart as well as completely destroying all the sensitive electronics inside the air control tower in conclusion at the end of all the testing there was a verified speed of 520 miles an hour making the thunder screech one of the fastest prop planes of all time however there was an unverified speed of 623 miles an hour which would make it the fastest prop plane ever and definitely the loudest. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out.